In Ghost of Tsushima, you'll strengthen Jin throughout your journey, unlocking more tools and skills to make tougher fights easier to take on. Since you can choose different skills that'll affect your playstyle as you level up, I'll go over a few basic and advanced tips that everyone should use, and list what skills are needed. If you like something in particular that you see, you can prioritize learning that in your skill tree during your playthrough. If you're not worried about your ego and the game is giving you a hard time parrying and dodging, especially during mob fights, it may be best to track down the charm of Mizu no Kami. Located early in the game at Spring Falls Shrine, this charm gives bigger timing windows for all of your parries and dodges. Since parrying and dodging is an essential part of the game, this charm is very valuable throughout the whole game. It can make you more efficient in combat, especially if you need to parry and dodge multiple attacks in a row. Some techniques pair really well with each other, so we've listed a couple combinations that you may want as you level up and grow stronger. Pair smoke bombs with a chain assassination technique, as you can get an instant multi-kill against enemies caught in the smoke's blast. You can typhoon kick immediately into a sticky bomb, then concentrate to get a badass looking combo. Combine Way of the Flame with Moon Stance's Tornado for a flaming hot spin attack. Remember that Way of the Flame makes your attacks unblockable, and your Moon Stance's Tornado has super armor, which means you cannot be interrupted during this attack. Arguably the most overpowered ability in the game is Wind Stance's Typhoon Kick Finisher. This unblockable kick forces a knockdown state, giving the enemy no chance to retaliate and offering you an instant kill option on normal opponents and critical strength on leaders. While it can be dodged sometimes and it doesn't work on brute units, its consistent effectiveness on everything else in high damage makes this extremely powerful. The bow gives you a chance to use a familiar ability called Concentrate, to slow down time to a crawl and take time with your shot. You can twist this ability to your advantage to make precise parries easier as well. Simply pull out the bow and concentrate by holding L2 and tapping R3. You can now concentrate on the timing to react to the enemy attack. Release L2 and then L1 immediately to parry exactly when you know the enemy attack will strike. There's no delay between putting your bow away and parrying, so you'll land easy perfect parries like this. Since resolve can't be refilled by any sort of consumable, you'll have to find creative ways to refill it. Killing enemies and finishing off terrified enemies is the standard way, but standoffs in particular are the best way to replenish resolve. You can also level up your parry to a resolved parry, whittle down a squad of enemies to one man, and parry farm him over and over until your resolve is refilled. <laughs> Killing hostile wildlife such as boars and bears also refills resolve. It's possible to do a pretty neat trick with your horse. Since enemies don't suspect horses on their own, you can use it as a disguise. At standoff range, dismount on the far side and whistle behind your companion. When the group of enemies come, you can take advantage of the chain assassination skill to wipe out a squad, or at least gain the advantage against larger groups, thanks to your trusty steed. An important good habit you should have as you get stronger and acquire more stances is to make switching stances against enemy types second nature. Getting into the natural flow of changing stances quickly and smoothly gives you a huge advantage on staggered damage output and puts much more pressure on the right opponents, especially during hectic mob fights. Remember that wind goes against spearmen, moon goes against brutes, water against shieldmen, and stone against regular swordsmen. This will give you a huge advantage in your battles. While dodging and parrying are two good defensive options, remember that jumping is also a viable tactic in battle. You can jump over most attacks in the game, and you'll want to learn when and how to avoid these attacks to turn them to your advantage. This is especially useful against red unblockable attacks. Doing jump attacks, including jumping sword slash or jump kick, are also considered a jump themselves, so learn to use it against the right attacks. Hopefully you've learned a thing or two that you can take on to your next fight. If you have any questions or have a neat trick of your own, don't be afraid to comment down below, and thanks for watching.